Hi, this is our group project on uh, different types of energy sources and the pros and cons. Um, my part is fossil fuels. So what are they? There's gas, oil, and coal. Fossil fuels are hydrocarbons. They are basically decayed plants and animals that are millions of years old. Um, the pros of fossil fuels, they are cheap compared to other types of energy sources. They have been developed longer than alternative energies and are easier to transport. Most of the world's infrastructure is based on petroleum products because of cost and accessibility. And fossil fuels also employ millions of people in oil and mining industries. Um, the cons are fossil fuels are non-renewable and we will eventually run out of our supply. And there's a big environmental impact um, because it causes global warming and declining air quality. Uh, gas and oil are also deep in the earth, which we have to use different types of drilling methods like fracking and stuff like that, which also harms the environment and uh, employees working in the industry. Um, how much of the world uses them? Almost everyone in the world uses fossil fuels in some way, uh, like most consumer products use uh, plastics made of gas and oil and stuff, or drive cars, or fly on planes and things like that. Um, uh, what does the future hold for it? Um, other renewable energies, as they develop more, they will probably overtake fossil fuels because um, of the environmental issues and the limited supply. Um, but right now they are the cheapest, they are the easiest transport, and almost everyone uses them. So for my part, I'll be covering wind energy. So essentially, wind energy is the conversion of natural wind that the the earth produces and is actually obtained from giant wind turbines that spin to generate electricity. So the pros of wind energy as a power source, it's extremely efficient. You can get generally around 70 to 85 percent efficiency from just one wind turbine. Another point is that it's virtually limitless. It's as long as the earth is spinning, we'll have wind. That's just a fact. And it's virtually 100 percent clean. So the general cons of these wind turbines is that, one, they pose a threat to birds. Birds just will naturally run into them and be killed upon impact. It's generally around several thousand birds have been killed in the last couple of years just due to wind turbines in general. Another point is that they're an extreme eyesore. Even though these towers generate a lot of electricity and are extremely beneficial, they're about 300 feet tall and not exactly, not exactly beautiful. Uh, another problem is that they're, while they may be extremely efficient, the power that they get from it isn't all that powerful. So you would need vast amounts of these wind turbines to power just a single city, which doesn't exactly seem very feasible. So how much of the world actually uses wind turbines? Around, right now, there's about 100 countries that actually use it as wind turbines, U.S. being one of the main leaders, and around 20% of our energy is actually generated from these wind turbines. And around 63 million, sorry, 63,000 megawatts of the world actually um, gets their power from wind turbines. So what does the future hold for wind energy? As it stands now, wind energy is one of the cleanest resources that we have to use for our future endeavors for powering the world. So it would stand to reason that the world would continue trying to use more and more wind energy. And this would be extremely viable once we can actually up the efficiency or even up how much power we can actually harness from wind energy. So once this becomes cheap, even we can use even more wind power. Nuclear energy. Uh, what is nuclear energy? Well, nuclear energy is the generation of power uh, through a nuclear reaction. Um, there are two primary sort of, or kinds of nuclear, rea or nuclear reactions, fission and fusion. Uh, first is fu or fission energy. Uh, this is what's primarily used. Uh, it's the breaking apart of heavier atoms, such as uranium or plutonium into uh, smaller atoms called daughter products. Uh, it yields radiation, uh, the daughter products of course, and large amounts of energy which are converted, which in the form of heat, which you use to convert steam, water into steam, and that generates power. Uh, the other kind is nuclear fusion. Uh, fusion is the combining of two larger, later elements into one heavier element. Uh, primary sources of uran or fission, fusion fuel will be deuterium and tritium, hydrogen isotopes, or helium. Uh, 
uh, fission releases radiation just like fission does. Um, but it uh, really it also releases energy. It releases four times more energy though than fission, so it's much more clean and efficient. Uh, uh, so the pros and cons. Start with the pros. Uh, fission, uh, it's abundant. Um, or fission, uh, there is actually not much fuel for it, but it is uh, pretty energy dense. There's a lot of in infrastructure set up for it. Um, it's clean in the sense that it doesn't release harmful gases or harmful uh, chemicals into the atmosphere. Um, fusion, uh, pros, it's virtually a limitless source of energy. Um, deuterium and tritium can be found in seawater, and there's enough uh, seawater, there's enough fuel in one gallon of seawater to fuel, uh, it's almost like a small town. Uh, no harmful byproducts and uh, it's a tremendous en energy density, something like 4 billion kilowatt hours per gram. Yeah. Uh, so the cons. Um, the fission obviously has long-lasting uh, radioactive isotope or uh, byproducts. Uh, this is what you always hear about and it's difficult to store, difficult to get rid of, uh, lasts forever. Um, and they're expensive to set up. All nuclear reactors are expensive to get set up, but once they do, um, they last a long time and very uh, efficient energy uh, production. Uh, fusion, uh, also very difficult to maintain. Um, the, it requires the hydrogen to be in a plasma state, and this is very hard to uh, keep because it's uh, some, several times the heat of the sun. Um, you touch a wall and suddenly all that heat is transferred to the wall. So it needs to be kept in a magnetic field, very hard to man maintain. Um, it's expensive to set up uh, just like fission or a nuclear reactor. Um, it will require several years of development before the uh, in energy input to energy output efficiency is actually viable. Uh, so how much the world actually uses it? Uh, France is the uses the highest percentage of their power comes from nuclear. At 77 uh, percent, they use about 400 kilowatt hours. The U.S., uh, though they only use 20 percent of their power or of their power comes from nuclear, uh, they uh, have double the kilowatt hours at almost 800. Uh, uh, what is the future fold for it? Uh, well, uranium and plutonium fission is almost at its end. Uh, there's not much more you can get from it. Something like 0.5 percent efficiency from the fuel you maintain, or from the fuel you burn. Um, but thorium uh, is, that is a lot of opportunities for it if uh, the infrastructure gets set up for that, for the whole different reactor type. Uh, fusion, though, is going to be the next chapter in human history. Um, with a virtually limitless uh, supply of clean and abundant energy, uh, it will be uh, propel the next generation of humanity uh, akin to something like the industrial of steam, uh, the invention of steam or the industrial of for nuclear energy. Okay, so my part was geothermal energy. So what is it? Geothermal energy is energy that is in the form of heat in the earth. In order to harness this energy, water is pumped down into the earth where it is heated into steam and then pumped back up in order to spin turbines, which is then turn the energy into electrical energy. So suppose of geothermal energy. It's virtually limitless power, uh, it's from a renewable resource. It's known to have the least impact of any power source. It's also abundant supply pretty much everywhere. It can also lead to significant savings if people choose to hook up a geothermal pump to their house. Uh, there's no fuel needed in the production or the use of the thermal pump or geothermal pump. And it also has the smallest surface land, print, uh, land footprint. While it doesn't need to go deep into the earth, the actual surface land footprint is very small. And uh, some cons about geothermal energy. Uh, areas that are abundant in geothermal energy are typically very far from civilized places. Um, the initial cost for starting up a geothermal pump can be very high. Um, it needs energy to make energy, so in order to run the geothermal pump itself, you have to have another source of energy, but in order to keep this a non-renewable uh, or renewable source, you can use solar panels. Uh, it has the potential to cause earthquakes as well from drilling down into the earth. Um, high temperatures are needed, so you need to drill um, Roughly in the U.S., it's about six kilometers down. It can also potentially run out of steam if too much water is pumped into the um, pump and it um, causes the area to cool. 
So how much of the world uses geothermal energy? Um, in the US, the western states like California and New Mexico use geothermal energy the most. Iceland derived between one quarter and one third of its um, electricity and 9% of its heating from geothermal energy alone. Uh, many of the countries in Central and South America have developed a portion of their geothermal resource resources for uh, utility-scale power production, um, with El Salvador and Costa Rica being seasoned users, users of geothermal energy. So what does the future hold for it? Uh, since temperature at a depth of about 6.5 uh, kilometers is above boiling nearly everywhere in the United States, uh, geothermal energy can be used in practically every state. Um, by 2025, around 13,000 megawatts of um, identified geothermal resources could be developed in the western part of the uh, United States alone. My part is solar energy. Now, what is solar energy? Solar energy is power obtained by the sun, harnessing the sun's energy. Uh, there's several ways of harnessing the, sun energy, the sun's energy, mainly through obtaining, uh, using the heat that the sun produces, or using the sun rays to convert the light into electricity. The first one that I want to talk about are the solar cells. Solar cells are basically like solar panels, what we use now in everyday life, or not all the time, but in certain small applications that we use in everyday life, such as like calculators or uh, garden lights, just outside lights, something that, that can produce, that can stay outside that, that the solar panels are able to get light. Um, solar, uh, solar panels, um, with the solar panel that's one square um, meter can generate enough power to um, power a 100 watt light bulb. Uh, solar cells were originally developed in order to provide electricity to satellites that were out in space and today, like I said earlier, they were used for outside uh, or everyday applications such as calculators and outdoor lighting. The next thing that I want to talk about is solar water heating. Solar water heating is used to heat water in glass panels located on a roof. This conserves gas and electricity to heat home, water in homes. Water is pumped through pipes in a panel to maximize the heat transfer from the sun. The pipes are painted black in order to keep the, the water warmer so heat won't escape. This helps the central heating system and cuts down the cost of energy bills. The third thing are solar furnaces. Solar furnaces use a large array of mirrors to concentrate the sun's energy into small space to produce very high temperatures. Um, on the right is a picture of a solar furnace in Odelio, France. It's used for sci scientific experiments and can achieve temperatures up to 33,000 degrees Celsius. The pros of solar energy. Solar panels produce no pollution and operate with little maintenance. The initial cost is high, but operating costs are low when compared to to existing power technologies. Applicable, applicable for low power uses, such as solar powered garden lights and battery charges, and saves approximately 0.7 pounds of coal per kilowatt an hour or two pounds of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour per hour. Um, over a 35-year expected life, a 10 kilowatt system will provide CO2 reduction equivalent to planting 1,450 trees. In comparison to a coal-fired power plant, a 10 kilowatt system will prevent emissions of 960,000 pounds of carbon dioxide, 4,200 pounds, of sulfur dioxide and 1,400 pounds of nitrogen oxides. It will produce 575,000 kilowatt hours of electricity, such as would be generated by burning 583,000 pounds of coal. The cons. Does not work well at night or on cloudy days. High costs require um, and a large initial capital investment. For large applications, the amounts of land Large amounts of, man, of land is needed, as well as, as uh, large amounts of money. Cost effectiveness is dependent upon the location and climate. So if you put a, a solar panel in a, in a location where not so much hot, uh, uh, heat is generated or the sun shines, then it won't really 
be cost efficient and you will lose money in the group.